So what is the benefit of growing your own? Just a tiny little example is the satisfaction of yummy treats and being able to lay aside stuff for later. <sighs> Welcome to Blue Garden Cottage. Today's video is coming to you a couple of days late because the one I had intended on posting on Thursday did not work. And that was just trying to get it onto the laptop. So today's video, no editing, point, shoot and upload and I hope it's okay. Just an update on the garden. We actually have a break in the rain, which was really happily received by all the plants. They're all happy, even listen to the bird. And now it goes quiet. Thank you, bird. Yeah, I know it's your pleasure. Right. Okay, I heard you. Right, so I have left one of the carrots to go to seed because it was not a hybrid seed. I don't think it was an organic one, but it's not hybrid. So let's hope it comes true to seed. Right, things are still growing. This bed I've cleared out of the beans. I have put in leeks and there's a couple of beetroot in between. And these squash, I am so impressed with the squash. They are beautiful. There's quite a few all together. I'll go around the other side and show you. Still have some nasturtium and even the begonia flowering. I love that little corner. The tomatoes are still going. I've cleared off all the undergrowth and cut the plants shorter to a couple of leaves above the fruit trusses so that they can fully ripen, hopefully, before the end of the month. Oh, let's show you this one lovely, lovely. Oh, aren't they just beautiful? Look at that. Gorgeous. A bit of powdery mildew, not worried about it. Look at the size of this lovely thing. It's supposed to be a small squash, but that is a fair size. I've cleared out this bed. Of all, the beans have come up. I've taken most of the char, char, cut the chard down. I'll still be getting baby leaves coming out the side shoot so I can still harvest the baby leaves whether for salad or for cooking. The kale I've harvested some of the best of the older leaves and those that have started to get too old and slightly yellow they've gone in the composter just to stop any yellowing or dying material ending up on the soil because that's where we've got all the snuck slugs and snails if we that let that happen. Oh, and it's much clearer now. I shall be able to next week on a dry day get some more leeks in here for the spring. These leeks are growing, but they're not growing very fast, but that's fine. They'll still be there over winter. And the same for this bed. And look at the tomatoes. These ones are not red tomatoes. They're either the green ones or the black Russian ones. So we'll soon find out as they ripen if they ripen. The grapes all have to be harvested. Oh, let me show you those quick. I'm chopping and changing all over the place, yeah. Beans are still drying some of them. Others I have dried. I'll show you them when I come to do the kit, the um, next week homemaking video. Grapes all ready to be harvested. That's a nice thing. Those uh, beans are still Growing them, I allow to fully develop, dry in the pods and save just like I do the borlotti beans for soups and stews to be used like kidney beans. Charred in between all the herbs over there, still doing fine. So I just keep tidying that up, harvesting what I want as I want. I only need about two plants for months at a time. So I don't need a whole bed of chard. I only need about two plants for a few months. So if I intersperse the, you know, stagger the plant in about two plants every two months, I should have chard almost right the way through the year. Ah, oh, look at those apples. They're looking good. 
and they will soon be ready. This is the month at the end of this month for them. I do need to cut back the marjoram, give it a hair trim. There's some chard in there. I've even put leeks in between the herbs and flowers over here. Spread some out over the tub so you can still put leeks in a tallish window box if that's all you've got. My scores and era, they're still surviving in those pots, have done for a couple of years. Every year I tip it out and put fresh soil in the bottom to keep them going down and lift up the level of the soil in the pots. They don't like drying out. Scores and era do not like being dry. And they're pretty hardy. They're a perennial for me. I just, they spread in the pot. So I started with one pot and as you can see all the new little plantlets. So I have to keep, you know, separating them out. Oh, just to be out in the garden when the sun is shining. There's a blue sky, virtually no wind. Oh, it's such a treat, especially in autumn. It's one of my favorite seasons. Cape Gooseberry, not filling out very well. The lanterns are getting nice and big, but the fruit inside, I think I need to feed it. This beautiful asparagus to let it go to flower. Now the flowers have come and gone. Beautiful, tiny, tiny little flowers. So pretty and delicate. Such beautiful feathery foliage. I absolutely love asparagus. Just to grow as a plant, even if I don't get to eat much of it. And of course, allowing it to do this, to properly develop, finish flowering and keep all its leaves will help strengthen the root. And this asparagus is now about five years old. So it's a good perennial. My little pot of nettles. I will put it in a bigger pot and I will keep hair trimming it and keeping it cultivated and growing. Those raspberries, that's where I had made the jam from that I just showed you. Oh, they're so beautiful. Oh, and the smell. Oh, the perfume of these raspberries is strong. Gorgeous. I was out here last night, just as it was getting dark getting a crop out quick because I know I might not get chance today. I still have not changed the fittings on the water butts. I wanted elbow joints there because it's not so practical for the water to come out the pipes like that. So I need elbow joints on the water butts coming out of the hoses and I still have to do that. But current situation being as it is, with costs going up on everything things have to be prioritized so I will put new elbow joints on there as soon as I can afford it in the meantime as well oh these holes I drilled hole I turned the lid upside down drilled holes in there for the water oh it's not going through because the bin is full already that's just one week's rain because this was empty at the beginning of the week. Completely empty. And it's filled up in one week. That's a lot of rain. So, and is it at the level of the pipe? Yep. So, yep, yeah, the pipe's working. Oh, wood store. It's looking nice and full, but not enough to last an entire winter especially if it's going to be as bitter as we suspect it might be this year. So we still have four more big beams to chop up. We won't get all of that in here. So I think for now we'll chop up another one, which might fill this up to there. And if we get another dry day, another one might fill this whole place. And then we'll have two more left. So we'll see how we go with those. But that should see us through the worst of January and February. We try to use the um, wood burner as little as possible through December and save the wood for the worst months being our January and February. Those holes need to be bigger because it's only dripping. Oh, 
So that's about just a walk through in the garden. My comfrey feed where the comfrey is rotting down the leaves. I'll put in a video I did a few years ago on how to make comfrey feed without the stench. I'll put a link in the cards in the top right corner of the video for you on that one. So that's a very easy one and I shall, I still have lots of comfrey there and in the fruit bed and in the front garden. So I shall harvest some more comfrey. I did dry some comfrey to make powder for some balms for rheumatoid arthritis pain. Um, I shall dry, I'll put a whole bunch more in the tub to make more feed ready for next year over winter oh. or oh, even to feed the plants in spring because we will have plants growing in in the spring and wanting to be harvested and setting fruit so they will also have to be fed um i can't think of much else the front garden i've not done much at all not had much time so winter preparations i am very far behind and that's down to the rain, finances and stuff, but I will get to it. If it's the last thing I do before November, I will get those water butts ready. I will get mulching around the plants to protect them from too much frost on the ground. And I will get more tidying up done in here because I want this tidied up. Oh, look at the sweet potatoes, how they've grown. They do love to spread themselves around. So I've just been propping them up, winding them around a string just to keep them from sprawling over the whole floor because they will cover the whole floor in here. And as long as we don't get too hard a frost, those sweet potatoes can be in here up to December, January, as long as there's no hard frosts. So hopefully, they will grow and ripen and I need to keep on top of the feeding and watering of that. There's more Cape gooseberries in here, but I've not had fruit on this one either. Do you know, in the potting shed there, the um, butternut squash, which I've kept in there because I put them out so late, they still haven't fruited. Plenty of flowers, no fruit. So I'm thinking it's a pollination issue. Might have to do that myself. Oh, oh what's on here? Are those bugs? No, thankfully. And this rose geranium. Well, pelagonium, actually. Rose-scented pelagoniums. Oh, I just have to brush the leaves in the rose. The pelagonium rose smell just... Mm. Oh, and they have such pretty pink flowers. Lovely. There you are, folks. That's about the update for the garden. These are struggling along, but they're doing well, even though they've been in pots. The passion, the proper passion fruit, grenadellas, are now starting to turn colour, which is very exciting. And there's the other two, closer to the size I really want them, so I need to keep up with the feeding and the watering because they're not done yet, they're not ripe yet. Once they're properly deep purple, I can cut them and then I can ripen them, finish in the house because proper passion fruit is not really ripe and hasn't developed its flavors until they get that wrinkly, um, hammered effect on the skins. Then they're ready. And I need to harvest some of these to put in with my rice and flour and dried foods in the store cupboard to keep the tiny, tiny little minuscule flies and weevils out of the jars because it's not airtight, but it's in stuff I use all the time. So the bay leaves will help keep them at bay. Literally bay leaves and keep them at bay. <laughs> no wonder. So there you go lovely delicious raspberry jam and in there i put 25 percent less sugar than i normally do um no pectin just fresh lemon juice in the whole kilogram of fruit that i turned into jam i used i think two small lemons the juice from two small lemons 
and it came out absolutely delicious. The perfume, the smell as you open the jar and the color, oh my goodness. And then the flavor is so intense. All I did was really, I sim it. I don't cook my jams at a very high temperature. I simmer them gently for quite a long period of time so that the fluid reduces and it concentrates the jam and the color and the flavor. And then I give it a four minute hard boil and then pot it up. And it is so delicious. So that is the benefit. And then this is kale crisps. I absolutely love vegetable crisps. And making my own kale is just so simple. And this I did not use an oven for. I used my dehydrator on a high, higher setting. And it's delicious. Absolutely. There's less risk of burning in the oven, even on a low temperature. If I don't keep an eye on it, it tends to burn. But in the dehydrator, I could leave it there a couple of hours. And it's done perfectly and crisp. So. <sighs> I'm going to take a moment to enjoy the sunshine. Spend the day with my grandchildren. And I shall see you soon, people. Do take care. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you have been growing anything. Do comment in the comment section below how your gardens are doing, whether you're heading into your spring now or like us in the Northern Hemisphere into your winter. What's growing in your garden? Is there anything you have a favorite harvest that you've had this year that you've been able to put aside for storage or anything that if you're going into spring anything you plan on growing to keep for storage for the winter times do let me know next week is homemaking week and you yes lovely no i closed the door because we don't want mice making their way into the house for the winter do we yeah so that's another winter preparation. Keep the door closed whenever you go in and out to stop mice making their way in for the winter. All right, folks, do take care. I shall chat with you again next week. I think I have a recipe for you. Oh, yes, I do. I have a recipe for you next week. I'll show you the beans that we dried. Those are still not drying. I might have to take them indoors to hang because it's too moist outside within the rain. I'll show you the harvest of the grapes. Oh, listen to those birds. Such a beautiful sound. Not that many this year. I think I'll leave you with that. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.